Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube uh, for some Ash Harrowing. This is going to be our first deck of the day. We have a donation deck filled today, so we got a bunch of viewer submitted lists for today. First one here is Ash Harrowing. Um, this is kind of a, a classic that we haven't seen around in a while, but this is something that was kind of popular a couple of months ago. We're going to be playing, um, you know, like our decks built around our uh, our champion. Ash. And we want to get as many Ashes in play as possible with the help of Harrowing. Um, you know, if we have uh, some Ashes that die, we're going to bring them back with Harrowing. And uh, then whenever you have, when you have like two or three or four Ashes in play, especially if they're leveled up, then they all attack and they all frostbite the strong, you know, you start frostbiting all of your opponent's stuff and they can't block with anything. And you hit them for a lot because, you know, it's six power when it's leveled up and um, and so that's what we're going to be kind of doing here. And uh, let's see. So it's, to start with, you know, we got some early game Omen Hawk, Averroes, and Sentry. Um, really good quality cards. Averroes and Sentry helps us uh, dig later on. Like this is just a, a good card to have. And you know, it's not even a, it's a bad it's not a bad card even as a two mana card to get with Harrowing, even because of that last breath draw card. Um, we have to get plenty of Frostbite. So we, you know, we have Brittle Steel, Ice Veil Archer. Harsh winds, you know, we have plenty of frostbite. Rhyme Fang Wolf, of course, works great with Ash, works great with all this frostbite stuff. Uh, so we got some of those in here. Um, in the mid game, we got Babbling Bjergs that can draw Ash, or, you know, sometimes hit, they hit Avros and Hearthguard, or our new top end card, Commander Ledros. That was the person that donated for this, talked about uh, having Commander Ledros as an additional top end thing. And I really noticed the heart in uh, Commander Ledros's uh, armor there. Eh, never really noticed that. Um, let's see. I got We got one Chronicler of Ruin in here that can kind of do some some tricky things. You know, we can uh, use the Chronicler of Ruin on, like, the Hearth Guard to give our allies an additional plus one, plus one, especially if the Hearth Guard took damage and it's like a 5-2 or something and, and reset. Um, yeah, Zombie Ash. We could do it on the Babbling Bjerg to redraw a card. Uh, do it on the Averroes and Sentry to, to draw another card. Omen Hawk, you know, get another couple of plus one, plus ones. Um, even even doing it like if our Ash has taken some damage, even putting it on the Ash to reset Ash isn't bad. And killing it, you know, we can kill Ash with that, bring it back, and then we have a dead Ash for Rekindler um, that will also always bring Ash back because it's our only champion. So let's give this a try. Ash Harrowing. One we haven't played in a little bit. <laughs> I didn't put the E here. Doesn't look like. Did I put the E? Okay, I did on the screen. Whoops. Just quick typing. There we go. That's better. Uh, yeah, hopefully the stream's not lagging for anybody else. I don't, I don't know. Can anybody else say if the stream is lagging for them as well? Hopefully not. Okay, get rid of Rekindler. I do like Hearthguard. Um, I think I'm gonna keep it. I like Hearthguard here. Ooh. Good card to draw. They're up there. And there we go, got 4-3 Rhymefang Wolf. A little more difficult to deal with, doesn't die to Mystic Shot. Boo, Solitary Monk. Well, we're just going to keep curving out. Pressure on them to do something. You name it, I'll make it. Does it make sense to attack with Omen Hawk? They block Omen Hawk, they take eight. Probably. Probably. 
Hey, astonishing. So that's pretty nice having our three drop trade with. It's hard. To, it's hard to have a three drop trade with um, a solitary monk, but trading with a solitary monk and a twin disciplines. That's definitely really nice. One girl wrecking crew. <clears throat> So this challenges Averroes and Sentry, this attacks in. And block with Omenhawk. Okay, good, that didn't attack in, good. Alright, so only two out of... Only two out of five for Ash. So obviously they're gonna play stuff, and they're gonna play stuff to keep, like, you know, if I block, if I challenge Vi, they're gonna obviously play something to keep Vi alive. Someone's gonna pay. Come on. Okay. So these would've traded if I would've gone the other way too. And that's why I wanted to play stuff pre-combat, because obviously they, they wanted to play spells to like they want to play spells that turn, so doing something pre-combat was uh, beneficial. Hmm. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, there we go. Got got the win. Great curve for us there. Beating maybe maybe the best deck right now with Vimerdinger, and they had a really solid hand. And so that was, um, you yeah, know, that was real impressive being able to uh, power through. You know, Vimerdinger's basically. I mean, that's that's Vimerdinger's. Uh, um, best kind of hand, you know, that Solitary Monk on, on three, um, Kempunk Pickpocket plus Twin Disciplines on four, Vi on five, uh, with something else, I think. Yeah, Vi plus Mystic Shot on five. Um, you know, fought through that very well. Yeah, our curve, our curve was, was perfect. Yep. Yeah, we had a, a we had just a perfect curve. So it's still, like, you know, like they they had their ideal curve also though. So that's that's a good showing that our perfect curve beat theirs. Okay, well, looks like we're gonna be doing some mulliganing. Fiora Zed's gonna be problematic for sure. These two are definitely gone. Um, I guess I have to get rid of Hearth Guard because it's kind of slow, and maybe we just need to get rid of Miss Call also. Um, yeah, we, we're going to need our Frostbite effects for sure. Yeah, it looks like a standalone deck. That's what it's looking like. Sentry. Okay, I'll take an Omenhawk. Hawk. 
Because I don't really want to play Icefield Archer on turn two where we're not frostbiting anything. Like, if they don't play anything on turn two. So I like getting... Uh, being able to play something else. So Omenhawk's nice because it does uh, bank the one spell mana for the Brittle Steel anyway. Did it? I think this is kind of new, right? Whenever you do this and it tells you your deck name during the game. I don't remember that always being like that. I think that's kind of new. Uh, it was always like that? Okay, well. Um... Mm. The harrowing. They cannot spread what they cannot see. A true Felionian will. Hmm. So no standalone. I played a Kinku Life Blade. All like both of these attack for four. This just does two to me, and they gain two. It's still a four-point swing. I think I'd rather have that four-point swing than the other way. No, I want to dash. Well, I could pass and have them waste eight mana. I don't think passing is the best play. So this is a race. If I must. I sense fear. What's up, Sweet Liberties? So things are going good for you. Things are going very good. Thank you so much. And thanks for the, that Twitch Prime resub for seven awesome months. More importantly, I hope things are going good with you. Everything out there. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, well. Let's frostbite something. So we either keep a 3-1 alive or a 2-2 alive. And I think it's better to keep a 3-1 alive. So let's do that. Really wish I could play both Avaros and Hearthguard and Iceville Archer. This would have just been a good time to have Ash. Ash. Good time to have Ash.
Hmm. So I don't think I want to Harsh Winds this turn. I want to use Harsh Winds defensively. So I'm just going to play some more things out first. Well, that's unfortunate. Because I, because basically I wouldn't really mind that much if Ash died, you know, like attacking in and they kill Ash because of Rekindler. So like, is it even worth it to attack? Let's see, because this blocks here and they just gain two life. Yeah, I mean, I still just got to attack, right? Like, I, I even have like this harrowing. I just don't want to give them a free kill with Fiora with Omen Hawk, but maybe I should. Maybe I should give them the free kill because I, I do need to clear space for harrowing also. Eyes open. So Harsh Winds will level up Ash. This is going to be really hard to get through and win. We basically need, you know, we need, we need leveled up Ash and Frostbite their stuff. Ooh. Big Commander Ledros. Um, see if I play this. This is risky. Fiora will be uh, two. It's risky because of single combats and stuff like that. What do I do? What do I do? Do I just play Ledros? Ledros puts him down to six. Um, I could do the Crystal Arrow and try to attack out, but they probably have something for that, and that's not even lethal anyway. I could just attack and try to miscall afterwards. I don't love that. So I think, I think we're going to go Ledros. Good for my harrowing. I am I am worried about another repost. If they have another repost and can you know this can block one of these, because you know like that's gonna go down to zero power. A repost is scary. The 
Oh, well, I don't want to play scared. They can have Fury as well. They're they're not a Fury of the North deck. That's a Freljord card, if that's what you mean. You would just pass the turn. I don't I don't know if that's necessarily where I want to be. Strike without worry, as fate wills. Okay, okay. <clears throat> that's a couple of spells that they're not using to have Fiora kill me, so that's good. Uh, Ledros is a play trigger. I was like, what if Ledros dies and we double miss call? But now Ledros is a play trigger. So there's a lot of things that we could lose to. That'll give me Ash and Averroes and Hearthguard with three mana. So I'd have like Crystal Arrow also. Yeah, so it may it may be better just to go Crystal Arrow and then have Grasp the Undying as backup. Even though I want to play Harrowing, it's probably safer to do this. We can at least start with Crystal Arrow and see what we draw. Yeah, like they, they need ways to pump the power of their things. Like Prismatic Barrier doesn't doesn't matter, but yeah they need yeah they need ways to protect the barrier or pump the power. So yeah they need like repose, twin disciplines. They've already played one like they've already played a repose, played at least one twin disciplines. Ooh, Harsh Winds is nice. Oh, no, because they would be able to... They can go Burst Speed block, and I can't Harsh Winds afterwards um, to make them not block, if that makes sense. Alone, we see things as they really are. Whoa. Whoa. Unexpected. Um, I think I just let it happen. No, I don't. I don't think I just freeze that again. It just keeps, you know, keeps them at three instead. Like it puts them down to three instead of six. Like if I cast harsh winds, it just puts them at three instead of six. Which is really not a big deal at all. I'd rather have the harsh winds for whenever they're attacking with like these things. I'm at ten. 
Um, you know, Grasp doesn't drain, but it would have killed this thing. But I, I think I'd rather just play the Ledros again. Now they're down to three. Uh, still. And... Um, you know, I just can have the harsh winds on their attack. They only have potentially two protection spells. Their unyielding spirit is gone. You know, like how they had the unyielding spirit on the life steal. That's gone. Right? Or is this... Is this thing still unyielding spirit? I don't think so, right? I don't, I don't think so. Because, yeah, no, if you will of Ionia, it does, it's not anymore. I guess I could have just gone double miscall and just put two Ledroses into play instead of recasting that. Alright, so I can play... We're going to play nothing. We're going to have Harsh Winds and Grasp available. They can't play this other... They can't play the Solitary Monk. Okay, so no Fiora. going for it. So we should have this. There we go. Now begins a new era of peace. I like I like the three like I like having that three one as the first attacker there because the three ones with my worst attacker like they would rather block they'd rather block Ledros or block like one of those other things if they had like some kind of block life steal thing they want to block those they don't want to block the three one and so having the three one first means that if, if they want to go block lifesteal, they have to block the crappy 3-1, and then we're still hitting with the much bigger creatures after that. So going, going, yeah, so going Ledros first, I think, is wrong. I think it's it's good to put the, like, when it's lethal also, it's good to put the your worst attacker first. All right, 2-0. <clears throat> This deck's picking up a lot of popularity. We played against it a whole lot yesterday, at least. Whoa. I have never... Have y'all ever had three of your champion in hand in the opener? I can't I can't think of any time that I ever have. I haven't played this game for months. I don't think I've ever had that. First three cards are just all the same champion. It's pretty crazy. I mean, it's, it's a good hand, right? Hey, Rex. <laughs> he had three Zeds, it was horrible. So Ash is a, a champion that is good to have in multiples because, um, you know, Ash turns on your level up, right? Like, so like your other ones will just be flash freezes. And there's nothing wrong with having some old flash freezes. So we'll, we'll take that. I don't want to attack and they block with hapless aristocrat. I want to trade other ways. Oh. Um. <laughs> I hope this is okay and they don't level up Callista <clears throat> with something. They'd have like have to have like Ravenous Butcher right now and other stuff like that. And I did just give them a card when like whatever card we drew really didn't matter.
We got definitely got to attack afterwards, right? We don't want to block first. And they gl glimpse beyond the other thing. And level up Callista. Ugh. That's unfortunate. Oh, that's unfortunate. Can't block if I block, then Callista levels up. I guess I just have Callista level up, maybe? Maybe we just have Callista level up and just block anyway. It's going to be really hard to keep that thing. You know, I don't have any challenger. I don't have any removal in hand. It's going to be basically impossible for me to keep keep that thing from leveling up anyway. We'll just clear out some of their blockers. So that's two, three, four, five. Winter, take you. Not quite lethal. Close. Boo. Continue without me. Was Avros and Sentry their biggest thing that died? As far as Callisto's concerns? Like, are they putting Avros and Sentry back? Maybe. Dang, it is Avarizen Sentry. That's such a good card to bring back with Callista. So I put my Avros and Hearthguard in front because I'm going to just bring it back with Miscall. Hearthguard's a good good thing to bring back. Doing that on the hearth card again, that wouldn't be bad. But I kind of need to, I think I need to keep the flash freeze available. Yeah, we gotta keep this flash freeze available. Maybe not, I could let them block with 
one thing. I could let them block with, what, Callista? Have my own, uh... Play something else to try to block with. Ooh, it's even better. Ugh, that's messy. That's messy. That costs no mana. They can still play another thing over this Omen Hawk. Wish we had one more mana for this Flash Freeze. You don't see you play Crystal Arrow, and then whenever you get priority back, they have four things that can still block after your Crystal Arrow. You don't see that very often. They've done a good job um, of having things that can block. Yeah, they really have. All right, so I attack. This can't block, so they can still block with three things. So they can block like here, here, here. They take 11, but gain life. Blech. Yeah, they're still good. Man, that, that went really well for them. They got to play two. You know, really three. They got to play three blockers with two mana. Um, that Butcher was perfect. Yeah. yeah, that was just such a perfect hit, that butcher. Hey, Gucci. It's almost like if I would have just played this turn, uh, let's see, if I would have just played the turn of just go to attacks with harsh winds you know if i would have just gone harsh winds flash flash reads attack it might have ended up being better for me That's still sentry? Maybe. I think so. I think that's still sentry.
Probably going to have to play the Harsh Winds this turn, which means I'd have mana for either Ash or Chronicler of Ruin this turn. I could pump up everything again, plus one, plus one, or draw something big. Everyone's a garden. Wow. That's a card. That's frustrating. This is the kind of game that usually we're able to close out, but they just kind of had a, a lot of things that were great. Okay, yeah, they just killed that butcher. Why this 2 one's not attacking is, you know, beats me. Why that thing's not attacking. Um... Just let both of these die, clear up some space. Harsh wins these. The doors. Going down to two. Surprised that thing didn't attack to, you know, threaten more damage. But I guess it was just one point of damage. I don't think I kill them before the Neverglade Collector kills me. From like whatever they block with. So I can say this can't block, this can't block, this can't block. No, I guess I, I guess maybe. Okay, let's see. So I. I mean, if they have atrocity, I still lose. But without, a, you know, besides atrocity, or if, or if they have just a sacrifice thing, like if they have a, a fast beat sacrifice. But I can say, um, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't really matter which one I do. All right, well, that's casting there, and then we do this here, and then. That does that. So they have to block with Neverglade Collector. So they can't just block with two other things and kill me with the, the other two things. Because Neverglade Collector doesn't trigger off itself. So that so if if they don't have a fast speed way to sacrifice, they lose. No, come on. I worked so hard. Oh, it just it doesn't matter. It's just the atrocity of the thing dying. Alright, it's zero power. It doesn't matter. Man! It did have atrocity, and just that one. <laughs> we needed one more life. Ugh. So close. Needed one more life. If you had Brittle, the Caretaker, you had one. I, I didn't have the mana, right? I didn't have the mana. Yeah, I, I didn't have... I didn't have the mana to Brittle Steal the that. Uh, obviously, I would have if I did have the mana.
yeah, because I mean, I, I didn't want anything to block, but I just I didn't I needed one more mana. We were one mana short. Um, but then again, they could have just atrocity there. I was at two, so like they could have atrocity there two four and killed me. Um, with you know, so like I couldn't I couldn't stop atrocity from killing me. Nautilus Maokai. Let's get rid of these. I mean, it's so close. Yeah, that butcher. Yeah, the butcher aristocrat was crazy. And the the turn the uh, turn four double vile feast. Not ideal. For the Rhyme Fang Wolf. All the world on one arrow. So next turn, it's like they're not gonna block here. Because they want, I, I'm assuming they want to challenge my Ash next turn, and so I'm planning on having Miscall bring Ash back next turn. I could do, I'll have five mana, so I could do like Glimpse Beyond plus Miscall. Oh, or I guess, I guess they wanted to save the five life. Oh, well. well darn. Sorry, Ash. So not a bad trade, trading Ash for Grass the Undying and Jawl Hunters. Especially when we have more coming back. It's so annoying to be at 300 rank, you lose four in a row, you go to 1,200, and then you win four in a row and you're at 1,000. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we went from we went from 400 to 1,500 after two days of being exactly 500. Like we, you know, like we won it, we won the exact same numbers we lost exactly in two days, and we went from 400 to 1,500 in the rank. I, I think they do need to change the the ranking system because that just it just incentivizes you not to play because like when it when this ranking system's like that it's just better to not play when you're at 400 than actually play and that's that's not a good system to have so maybe like a, a point system you know like you you gain a point if you win you lose a point if you lose kind of thing so if you're if you go if you win as many as you lose you don't you don't really go up or down. Something like that. So basically, I didn't want to play Ash pre-combat because they had, you know, enough mana for Ruination. I gotta be worried about that. Um, I don't really want to waste all my mana. Might as well just Vengeance this thing. It's like, you know, it's just a big 7-5. I don't know, should I save Vengeance for something else? Maybe. Maybe. You were at 500 and had an 11-0 streak, and you got up to about 230. And then you went 3-3 three and three and went back to uh, 500. Rough. Oh, that's 
We've got some use out of these grass, the Undyings, and I still have enough mana so I can play Ash. The signal fires. <clears throat> and then we're going to be able to attack for... Ugh, I wish Brittle Steel would do some of this stuff. I will unite the Think they attack? Maybe they attack. Attack! Do it. Do it. Darn, they didn't. Attack, go ahead. Because I would just want to block with my 1-1s. One -ones. Or I guess I, this thing I have to block with the 2-2. Two -two. Just like so I can brittle steal these things. Let's see, I need uh, I need one more Frostbite though to level up. Uh, I, guess, I guess they still do get to block at zero. Unless, until Ash is leveled up. Okay, so they can't Ruination. Um a true Felionian welcome. Perfect. Avocens stand together. Avarosa, guide me. If they survive this attack, I'm in a lot of trouble. Obviously, because they have, you know, five mana, you get three eight eights kind of thing. If they, if they survive this attack, if they have like double jettison or something ridiculous like that, I'm in a lot of trouble. Sweet. Double jettison would give them deep, and then they'd be able to block. This deck's been pretty sweet. It's been pretty sweet. You know, like, we were th three and one, and that uh, that one loss was pretty crazy. It was a pretty crazy loss that we had. All right, so Glimpse Beyond Rekindler is gone. We're playing against Elusives. Um, you know, like they don't really kill our stuff, uh, but we kind of need, you know, like we could use some of these as like tempo plays, but both of these are like a little bit later in the game. They're not like early. Um, so I could just mulligan it all and look for early stuff. Even though I like both of those cards are perfectly fine, I'm gonna I'm gonna mulligan perfectly fine and look for better. It could end up being worse. Yeah, like I would much rather have those cards. Okay, Omenhawk. Omenhawk's great, but I'd much rather have those cards than Ledros or Rekindler. But if I would have kept them, you know, we could have said like we would have had those two plus Rekindler plus Rhymefang Wolf, and then we draw like Ash for our first card. That's kind of rough, but I want to attack. Final pass. No, not good. <clears throat> Alright, well, let's eat this. It's good to get that out of here so Navori Conspirator can't pick it back up. Um, and just, yeah, just get it out of here. That's good. Uh, but Rekindler. It's a very bad card in this matchup. Play my part. 
It's not like, like, I wouldn't mind my Ash dying. Because then we could be able to rekindle her back. But maybe it's better to just go straight to attacks here, let them block Ash with, like, a two-power thing to, like, almost kill it, and then we Chronicler. And... Have it stay alive. Uh, I guess this, this is annoying them challenging this thing and not that that thing. I don't care about this sh this uh, Kinku Wayfinder. I'd rather hit, get the Shadow Assassin. No, I don't think they'll have a graveyard or something similar in this game. I think that it's it probably takes up like more room space that the, the, than they want. Because remember, this is this is a game that's designed for. Um, designed for mobile. They want it to work on mobile. So just having more... Um, uh, having more things that clutter the screen is probably not something that they want. Well, this withering whale isn't doing a whole lot for me. Eyes open. Watch your well then. Where are you? You're a one out of five, Ash. So this would be two and three with the harsh winds. And then a Rekindler. Um... Okay, you block here. Uh, I guess I'm gonna take that six. No backing down. This puts me down to four. Hmm. Maybe I need a block over there. And go to eight. This is just much better for me. I probably shouldn't go down to four though, right? So that's that's three. We're gonna have rekindler ash, and both the two ashes can attack and make it four five. Um, uh, I probably shouldn't go down to four. Nah, going to four. Well, definitely gonna let this happen. Need to have the this flash freeze back on defense again. Um, so you know, like we'll have withering whale and flash freeze as ways to try to stay alive. Um, I guess I probably could have just sac I could have sacrificed that four two. I guess to glimpse beyond to look for more frostbite spells. Okay, Brill Steel's good. It's good. Five cards. It's a lot of cards, and they have a lot of mana. It's a lot of cards and a lot of mana over there. Do not fear the path. I walk your path alone. 
Alright, so my spell mana is 5, 8, 9. And so if I spend 9 mana, I only have 2 extra, so I don't have enough for Rhyme Thing Wolf. So for now, gonna pass. There's always a way out. Do not fear the shrouded path. I walk your path alone. Is it possible I don't rekindle it, or I don't uh, Withering Whale? I guess it's possible. No, I th we probably need to hold Withering Whale up. Let's uh, let's just say pass turn. Let's just pass. Please control. They cannot hide. Oh, that is not ideal. It's probably fine though. Okay, so we're going to flash freeze this. Alright, right now we're just taking two. Okay, we took two. Kindle anew. Swiftly now, as the arrow flies. All right, we'll say those things can't block. The thing that can block is blocking over here. Still 15, right? Yes, it is. All right. Whew. All right, close game. Got him. Ash is really good. Ash is really good. All right, cool. We moved from 872 to 872. That's pretty good. I'm glad that we were at 872 before that win, and now the now that we won, we're at 872. Good to rank up there. All right, so yeah, we got a 4-1 here, and man, that loss was super close. We had a lot of things kind of go wrong for that loss. Uh, but Ash is just awesome. This is a good donation deck here. Ash is awesome. I liked our early game with like the Omen Hawk, Averrosen Sentry. Those were both good, um, getting us in that late game. Um, and yeah, just Ash bringing it back. Um, and everything like the chron the chronicler of ruin that was clutch that last game like killing our own ash and so since we killed our ash then we got to bring it back with rekindlers that was pretty clutch um yeah pretty awesome possible that you don't need two ledros at the top end you know maybe just like one ledros is fine like this is a, a card that's not great in all the matchups but there's you know some matchups that you want one but maybe you just need one of these um, and you can have another, like, Chronicler or Bjerg, or I wouldn't mind one more, like, card that costs, like, two or three. Um, I don't know exactly what that would be. You could have, like, maybe one Starlet Seer, question mark? Um, I wouldn't mind having, like, just the Flash Freeze, actually. Maybe, maybe we should just have Flash Freeze in this deck, like, instead of Grasp, Withering Whale, uh, basically these two, Grasp and Withering Whale. Um, Flash Freeze is, is pretty good these days, I think, with people playing bigger and bigger things. Because, um, yeah, I like, I like Vengeance a lot uh, right now, how it kills everything. These two cards I'm not a, not huge on right now, um, but I wanted, like, uh, the list was actually submitted actually had just three Grasp the Undyings, but I wanted to, um, they said feel free to change a few things up, and, and I wanted to kind of spread out that interaction instead of all Grasp the Undying, because it's not great, but... Withering Whale, maybe we shouldn't have Withering Whale. Like maybe, like I like one Vengeance, I like one Grasp. I don't really, don't think you need like tons more of those, but maybe we should just have a Flash Freeze instead of Withering Whale. Cause was, we saw even in that matchup, Withering Whale is just not killing too much right now. 
But uh, yeah, pretty pretty awesome deck. Uh, definitely impressed with it. Ash Harrowing, the 4-1 that could have been a 5-0. So close. Uh, Zodi Lordy, sweet. I uh, love the YouTube first time catching live. Thank you. Hey, awesome. Thanks for coming on over here, watching the stream. Uh, yeah, welcome to the channel. All right, everybody else watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Feel free to leave those comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. This one is probably not that difficult to put together. Also, considering um, if you were doing the login bonuses during the uh, set release for the Rising Tide set, uh, you did get two free ashes if you were doing that. So, you know, like that would be getting a couple of, you know, ashes means you don't have too much more. I mean, there are some epics in here. And everything, too. It's not like the cheapest deck. I'm not saying it's like a budget deck, but maybe it's not too difficult to put together. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, Will is good against Heimer decks. That's a good point. That's a good point. Very good against Heimer. And, and you still run into a burn deck every now and again, too. Anyway, that's it here for Ash Harrowing. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.